So in this video, we're going to continue talking about trapezoidal rule. And trapezoidal rule gives us a way to approximate integrals of the form f of x dx as x goes from a to b. And we have this formula uh, that was previously given in another video. Now, the error that we uh, incur with trapezoidal rule is bounded. We can bound our error, which is very good if we want to use this rule um, in practice. So we may want to limit our error or bound our error um, so that we're not making wild guesses, but that we know our answers are correct within a certain uh, tolerance. So the error incurred by trapezoidal rule is bounded by k, which is some constant, times b minus a cubed over 12n squared, where uh, this k value comes in as follows. The, it's the, an upper bound for the absolute value of the second derivative of the function. So let's take a look at an example to figure out exactly how one would uh, compute these sort of things. So the example that we'll take a look at uh, says, how big should n be? in order to ensure that the error is less than or equal to 1 one hundredth or 0 0.01. So the way we would proceed with this question is the first thing we need to do is figure out what this k value should be. So let's compute uh, if f of x is the square root of x, we can write that as x to the 1 half power, and so we'll figure out the first derivative here is 1 half times x to the negative 1 half, and the second derivative is negative one-fourth x to the negative three-fourths, or excuse me, to the negative three-halves. Now, what we want to do is we want to look at the absolute value of that second derivative on our interval a, b. So let's see here. Our second derivative is uh, negative one-fourth x to the negative three-halves power. So we can put this down in the denominator. That's the square root of x all raised to the third power. And taking the absolute value and pulling the 1 fourth out in front, that just becomes 1 fourth times 1 over the square root of x cubed. Now, uh, on our interval from 1 to 3, this value here is no worse than it is for the smallest value of x. Um, and there are a number of ways you can go off and compute that. I will leave that for you to do. Um, but in this example, you might just be able to uh, argue that it's a monotonic function on the interval from 1 to 3 and find where the max is. And again, the max is going to occur when x equals 1. Um, and in that case, it's 1 over the square root of 1 cubed, which is just 1 fourth when we multiply it all through. So uh, that's going to be our k value. Now we could choose k to be anything. It could be a hundred or a million or really anything, um, anything that's bigger than one fourth. But we're going to get a better bound on our error here if we choose k to be as small as possible. So we're going to snuggle that k value right down as close as we can to this uh, absolute value of the second derivative on the interval a to b. So that's going to be our choice for k. Okay, so let's come in here and take a look at our uh, error then. So the error incurred from the trapezoidal rule is going to be less than or equal to 1 fourth uh, b minus a, so it's going to be 3 minus 1 cubed over 12 and squared. And we want that uh, to be certainly less than point. Zero, 1. And so what we're going to do at this point is we're going to take a look at this piece of the inequality. And the logic here is that if we can make sure uh, this piece here is less than point, uh, zero, 0.01, certainly the error incurred from the trapezoid will be less than point, zero, 0.01 by the transitivity of inequalities. Um, okay, so carrying on. Computing up here, we've got 1 fourth times 8, so that's going to be 2 in the numerator. So we're going to have 2 over 12 n squared is less than or equal to 0 0.001. And so if we continue with this calculation, what we end up getting is 1 over 6 n squared. Multiplying both sides here, we're going to end up 
with 1 over 0 0.06 equals n squared, or taking the square root of both sides, we'll get the square root of 1 over 0 0.06. Um, and that should be an inequality there. So n has to be greater than or equal to that. And recall, n is an integer. Um, so when you actually compute this, this comes out to be something like, you know, 4.0, it will round to 4.1 approximately, so n has to be bigger than that. n cannot be um, a non-integer, it has to be an integer, so that means that n would have to be greater than or equal to 5.